Hey everyone, welcome back to Emerald Doom Miniatures. My name is Dietz, and in this video, I'm gonna paint up this fourth edition Empire Celestial Wizard. Now make sure you stick around to the end because I'm gonna do something a little special with this one and show you guys a little hobby hack. So let's get into it. So it's been a while since I painted a single mini. I've done two batch paints recently and it's really pushed me over the edge. So over the weekend, I wanted to have some fun and paint a single mini and experiment a little to have a bit of a reset. You might've seen the video I posted about minis I wanted and couldn't get. Well, while I was making that video, this fourth edition Empire Celestial Wizard popped up and I had to grab him. I'm gonna paint this guy up as vibrant as I can and as quickly as I can and try not to stress too much about being super neat and really just see how I go and go with the flow. I just wanna have fun, experiment, and just try new things with this mini. I really love the whole Empire Wizard range. There's something about those minis that makes me think of cartoons in the 90s. They look like wizards on steroids and I love them. Like always, I want my minis to be pretty vibrant, so I gave this guy a white undercoat. As you know, I like to do my faces and skin tones first to really set the mood. While doing this, I was still suffering from a bit of batch painting trauma, so I had to slow myself down for a minute and realize I was only gonna do one face. I slapped on some Kislev flesh and then a good coat of Gulliman flesh wash, getting in all the crevices. Then went back to laying with Kislev flesh and mixing in some Pallid Witch flesh. And then just apply this on the raised areas all around the face. Now this guy has the tiniest little eye sockets I've ever seen. So I applied some dryad bark using my skinniest brush and taking my time. I then added some white over this and then I finished with a tiny little dot of dryad bark. Super simple, effective, and quick. I then moved on to my layers and I slapped down a good coat of Fenris Grey to the beard. Nothing beats minis with beards. I love painting beards, they're so much fun, but we'll get back into the details of that one later. I then put a base coat of Techless Blue all over the tunic, the cape, and his weird little hat. Pink is one of my favorite colors, so I had to add it to this mini, I couldn't not. I added some Empress Pink to the undershirt and anywhere I really wanted a little bit of a pop. I then prematurely added some ultramarine blue wash over it. I don't know why, all over the blue area. Anyway, I probably should have done it after, but I got too excited, I love doing washes. Then I added some Jean Stealer Purple to the trims. I thought this would go really well with the pink and the blue and kind of give it like a Merlin look or some crazy wizard look. I then applied Gianna's gold pretty much everywhere, all over the staff, his little helmet hat thing, his belt, and all over his trinkets and around this little trim area. I find this rich gold works really, really well for like a base true metallic metal. Now back to my favorite thing, washes. I went over the purple with Margot's purple and then added Gullum and Flesh all over the gold to give it some depth. I find there is something therapeutic about washes. I must be really, really weird because I just love them. I don't know why, it's just, it just feels good coming off the brush. Anyway. Now the next part of this was an experiment. I have this really full on wash called Doomfire Magenta, you guys probably all know it, and I never use it, so I thought today was gonna to be the day to use it. And I applied this all over the pink areas. Was it a little too much? Probably, would I use it again? I'm not too sure. Now for the layers. I put down my Lotham Blue all over the cloth, the cape, and the helmet, making sure not to get much in the bottom of the folds. I thought going from a techless base coat to an ultramarine wash to a lighter Lotham blue would give me a really striking bit of contrast. I then added blue horror to the mix and lay it up, adding a little bit more in until I was happy. I then added a blue horror edge highlight. It wasn't the cleanest paint job I've done, but I was just really having fun with this model and not taking myself too seriously. And really that's the main thing about this one. This was more of like a palette cleanser for me. I'm a strong believer in thinking you should be having fun while you paint. If you're not having fun while you're painting, you should probably drop the paintbrush, go outside and get some fresh air. I went back over my pinks with Empress Children and added a sharp edge highlight with pink horror all around the trim.
Pink Horror is a really fun color. It's in my top 10 favorite colors, actually. I just love it. I really do. I then went back over with Jean Steeler Purple and then added a little bit of white to the mix and just gave it a nice little edge highlight anywhere I thought light would be catching. Now I love painting a good beard and through experimenting on a Grombrindle model recently, the White Dwarf model, I found a really good way to paint a cold looking beard. Now I have Fenris Grey as the base coat. I then add a highlight of Ulth One Grey, just being super careful not to get it in any of the little folds or cracks. It's okay if you do, it's just paint, you can paint back over it. I then mix my Ulth One Grey with a little bit of white and then just go with the tips and you know, anywhere I think I want a little bit of a highlight. And that's pretty much it. It's very, very super simple. As you can see from my art behind me, you can probably tell that I love pastels. And every chance I get, I try to add them to any of my minis. There's something about like, you know, the early morning sun or the late evening sun on the sky, pink skies and all that mix that I really, really love. Okay, now for the gold TMM. I'm still trying to figure out my true metallic metals. It's something I'm going to work harder on in the future as I still have a lot to learn. I went back over with Gianna's Gold in a glazed consistency, being super careful not to get anywhere I didn't want it. Then I glazed on some Auric Armor Gold to the top facing areas or areas where I thought that light would be hitting. There are probably some great ways to do true metallic metals and there's probably some great tutorials out there. Last up, I did an edge highlight of silver. I just applied this to the top edges. I use silver from Vallejo because it's a pretty bright silver and does the job well. Now recently I saw a video on how to paint a prismatic blade. You've probably seen the video from Rogue Hobbies. Now because I wanted to experiment, I gave this a crack. I didn't have the paints, I didn't have the same colors, so mine was a bit of a mess and didn't turn out that well. Now I think you should go watch that video because I completely butchered this. I didn't have the correct paints, so I went a little bit wild and used extremely washed down paints that I had lying around. I used Empress Pink, Aram and Blue, and then a mix of Aram and Blue and Moot Green and then some yellow for the tip, but it didn't turn out that well and it didn't turn out nearly as half as well as you can see on that tutorial video. Maybe go jump over to Rogue Hobby's tutorial on how to paint this and I will try this prismatic blade again soon. Maybe I'll get some practice in and try it again and get the correct colors, but it was still fun to do. Now I'm on the home straight and one of my favorite colors to paint gems is green. Green gems really, really pop, and they make me think of warp stones from Mordheim. Now, I already had every color on the color wheel on this mini, so I thought throwing green into the mix would be pretty fun as well. I used moot green as the base, then slowly glazed some watered down black paint in the top right. I just build this up slowly until I'm happy and wait for it to dry before adding another layer. Then I mixed in some moot green and white and added that to the bottom left. And then finally, I just added a little white crisp dot on the top right. And here it is in all its glory. But the thing is, this mini isn't really finished yet. As I said in the start of the video, there was something else I wanted to add to this, and it's a little bit of a hobby hack which you can use with your minis. Now, I was always nervous at the idea of freehanding stars, but with a bit of practice, this has become a little bit easier for me. I get my skinniest brush, and I slowly and carefully place the stars where I want them with blue horror. I do this so if I need to erase them, it's easier than going back over with stark white. When I'm happy with the placement, I go back over with my white paint. I really like to take my time with these and it's important to relax your hands. Being tense doesn't help out with the flow. Painting on dots for the stars with a paintbrush can really suck and I hate using a paintbrush for this. So what I do is I grab a toothpick I then sharpen it until I get a really, really good point. Then I simply just dot it in the paint and dot it on the model. I just go around now and add this to where I think stars should be.
And that's pretty much it guys. A super quick fourth edition Empire Celestial Wizard all painted up. Here it is. It's always good to have a break from doing the boring stuff, you know, like the army grind and stuff like that. So I strongly encourage you to go out there, get a model you've always wanted to paint and just go for it. Paint it up, go crazy, have some fun. Let me know down in the comments what your favorite model to paint was. I'd love to know. And if you could like and subscribe, I'd really, really appreciate it. So I'll see you next time, guys. Take it easy. Bye.